what if there are still thousands of years of church history left? And what if the command in Genesis was not just a command, but a promise of what God wanted to do? Fill the earth. Hondo! Hondo! morning you two welcome back to the hondo channel the hondo channel show it is friday morning i follow i follow right response ministries at least i used to i guess i'm not subscribed to them anymore but i still get their stuff on my feed and i was watching a video that they released with Dr. James White. James White is a presuppositional apologist. He's a he's also an elder at a church in Phoenix, Arizona. I think that's where it is. Uh, Apologia Church with Jeff Durbin, and he travels all over the country and debates reformed Christian topics. He debates Muslims. He debates Catholics. He debates other Christians on Christian beliefs. I really like him. He's he strongly recommended. I think he's a Baptist though, so that's the only thing that I disagree with him about. It's not a big deal to me anyway. It's a big deal to some people. What if we're in the early church? Th that's a question that everyone has to ponder. Because every generation has always assumed, we're it, we're it, this is it. But I was watching a video he made on post-millennialism. He's giving a, a speech, sermon, it's not exactly a sermon, on post-millennialism. And one of the questions he raises is, what if we are not in the last days meaning what if christ is not coming back soon within our lifetime within our children's lifetimes and god has much bigger plans than the people that have lived up to this point than the church as it is right now and in its scope in its strength in its in its current population what if god has plans beyond what we can imagine right now when you when you think about the black death you think about 1347 and people st it, it starts coming from the east and over the course of pretty much 49 to 51 over half the population of europe died but think about what it was like when people were dropping dead, I, I've always said it would be really easy for Hal Lindsey to have made a killing during the Black Death. Can you imagine? I mean, every plague in the, the book of Revelation, you could find some type of connection to what in the world was going on at that particular point in time. And it looked really dark. But think of all the things that Christ still intended to do in his church after 1347. Just think of the thousands, millions of the elect that have been gathered in since that deep, dark time. Can you imagine that someday Charles Spurgeon is going to be preaching in the Metropolitan Tabernacle in London? Could you have imagined the internet today being able to proclaim the gospel of Christ and his kingship over this world all around the world instantaneously? You could not imagine any of those things. He talks about some of the events in the past that have caused Christians to think they were living in the last times, like the bubonic, the bubonic plague, which destroyed huge, huge numbers of people in Europe in the Middle Ages. I'm sure they thought, because basically all believers have thought since Christ left, since Jesus left the earth, that we are living in the last days and Christ would come back at any moment because that's what he said. He said, I, I, I'm coming quickly. But again, to, to God, time is, it's not 
really a thing. It, he doesn't experience time as we do. And soon to him, in an existence of eternity, who knows what that means? I mean, honestly. He raises an interesting question. He talks about Psalm 2 and how Psalm 2 is basically a promise that Christ will rule the earth. The nations, the evil in this world is no threat to God. The kings that rule this world with their evil and their injustice, they are nothing to God. And God can at any time just conquer them and reign. And I went to a eschatology seminar where a guy named G.K. Beale was talking on Revelation. Very, very smart guy. I'm probably going to buy his commentary as soon as I can save up the money. But he talked about Revelation, how Revelation is entirely symbolism. And in the very first verse in Revelation talks about God communicated the by signs, God signified. That is the word in the beginning of Revelation. God signified the things that would quickly take place. These things in Revelation. And a lot of the things in Revelation are not really future events. They're things that basically are ongoing in the church. Like the seven letters are things that are always typical of the way the church is. And how the Babylon is not, of course it's not a woman, but it's not a single entity, but more of the, the world as a system. And the way Paul talks about the world is, is very similar, basically the same thing. The world system that is ruled by Satan. And so he, he talked a lot about that, and it was very interesting, and I learned a lot. He talked about millennialism and that they believe that we're in the millennium right now and that it isn't a future event but that it basically happened when christ left or somewhere around then and satan is bound and christ will come you know after the after that period of satan being bound and anyway that's that's what i understand maybe it's not exactly right but the basic idea I got was that right now we're living in the millennium. He pointed out some verses where he disagreed with uh, post-millennialism, which is the belief that Christ will come after the church basically conquers the earth. The true church and Christ reigns over the whole earth, as it says in Psalm 2 and Psalm 110 through the church, through the true church, people get saved. So that's post-millennialism. The church, by the power of God, by the Spirit of God, reigns in the world, the majority of the world, maybe all the world, not every single person, but we can say that Christ reigns because Christ's body is the church. And Psalms and passages like Psalm 2 and Psalm 110 become true. It says in Psalm 2, You are my son today, I have begotten you, ask of me, and I will surely give the nations as your inheritance, the very ends of the earth as your possession. You shall break them with the rod of iron, you shall shatter them like earthenware. So Psalm 2 and Psalm 110 are about Christ ruling the earth in some future time. I'm also a big sci-fi nut. My uncle took me to see the original Star Wars when I was five years old. And of course I fell asleep because it was super boring. <laughs> Just kidding. But I'm a big sci-fi nut. Star Wars isn't exactly sci-fi. They, they tack on sci-fi elements. If you want to watch some good sci-fi, you need to watch Star Trek The Next Generation. But anyway. James White talks about a, a world where God has much more to do that he wants to do in the world than just what we can imagine right now. He mentions the church, again, back in the Middle Ages, in the bubonic plague, and men thinking that that was the end. 
because that was because the revelation talks about an enormous plague that kills a third first i think it's a fourth and then a third but he says that was before charles spurgeon and all the people that became saved and all the influence that spurgeon had and all the growth that spurgeon had and knows there wasn't just spurgeon but after him of course there was jonathan edwards and there have been many godly men since then that men before them would not have imagined that god was going to do the things that god is going to do through these men and i don't ever say these are the end times because i have no idea i mean the the culture and the governments right now are headed down very destructive very wicked paths but there are a lot of believers there are a lot of faithful believers that are standing against this kind of thing and they're also moralistic pagans doing the same thing and i pray that a lot of them get saved men like uh, ben shapiro and jordan peterson that are also standing against the evil that is that is marching right now one thing that i noticed in genesis is what god said to adam he said fill the earth and subdue it you know i i always think that i'm a super smart guy and i know nearly everything there is to know about everything important but i barely realized I, and i barely understood recently that the world has not always been populated to the extent that it is it started wherever e it started wherever eden was and it grew up from there slowly and we still haven't populated the whole earth and what if the command in genesis was not just a command but a promise of what god wanted to do fill the earth i mean there's tons of unpopulated un area on the earth and we haven't even gone to the ocean floor that's a big science fiction goal to live on the ocean and in the ocean that is part of god's plan to fill the earth with people not just with people but with his people we can't do that if most of the world is dead in sin because sinners just sin that's all they want to do that's what's happening right now there's no scientific progress being made people aren't improving they're just going insane in their wickedness and the only way that we're going to to do what god commanded back in genesis is if people get saved and they stop their sin if they fill the earth through progress through scientific progress scientific progress that is based on faith in god where god teaches us things about the earth about the world because we trust in him and this has happened before i don't know a lot about history but i know that men don't progress in knowledge of the earth and science if they're just steeped in sin and subduing the earth what if it means not just domesticating animals and building in wild regions but actually subduing the earth what it does all the disasters all the climate and the weather what if through faithful spiritual progress and faith in god we learn how to subdue the earth in every imaginable way i mean that that's like centuries centuries ahead of us post-millennialism i think is i think is bibl biblical i think all millennialism is basically pointless i mean to believe right now that satan is bound and satan is accomplishing a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense to me. that doesn't seem right and 
But those are just things that I've been thinking about. Um, Post-millennialism post and the future and the end of the world. And you guys have a good day. Bye.